Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, the squad is in the news once again and the possible future of Rocksteady. As always, links are going to be in the description down below. And while you're down there, don't forget hit. <laughs> While you're down there, please don't forget to subscribe. And without further ado, let's begin. The squad ends the Justice League dev new it was all going wrong which honestly is not really surprising it seems like they had an initial plan in the beginning and things just kind of spiral out of control and took a different turn it would seem the official jason schreier report tm about the failure of yet another live service game is out this time focuses on the squad and the justice league which would argue has been the worst disaster of all time i don't think it's an argument i think most people would agree that the squad is definitely one of the biggest blunders of console history i mean i think it cost them over 200 million dollars to make um and they've i don't think they've made they i don't think they've made any profit with the release of the game as of right now also the game has been out for less than four months and it's been on sale i think twice already the rocksteady live service superhero shooter debuted to horrible review scores peaked at half of Marvel's Avengers concurrence high and now averages under 500 players at night on Steam. It's actually under, like, I think it's under 400. And that's crazy because Marvel's Avengers actually came out with a demo and the demo was trash and people still played it. However, in the sake of being fair, Marvel's Avengers was out during the pandemic. So it's not like I had anything else to do, right? What went wrong? I hate to say it, but it's pretty obvious. And what seems to always be happening with this sort of thing, bad management making bad decisions, that badness being known by the devs themselves as they were making it, but it just couldn't course correct. Now, the thing is, one of the definite things that's happened is that the producers, the people with the actual money saw games like Fortnite and Destiny. And they were like, those games are making a lot of money and I want to make a lot of money. So what should I do? I should take a studio that's excellent at making games like Rocksteady. And then I'm going to make them make me a money printing game. However, what these, um, these producers fail to understand is that building a single player game from an excellent studio, even if you have an excellent studio for making single player games, they're not necessarily gonna be just as good in making a live service game. See these minis behind? I, it's a little bit of web. I painted these myself. I painted all of them. There's, uh, there's more, I won't bother you guys with that, but I'm pretty good at painting minis. I cannot paint a portrait. I cannot paint a landscape. These are not my skills. I know how to use a brush and I know color theory. You cannot ask me to reproduce the Mona Lisa, even though I can paint uh, demons and goblins and ghouls and all that nonsense. But what struck me the most is just how much the on the ground devs Jason talked to knew this was going to happen to some extent as baffling decision kept being made and the devs kept asking themselves the same questions fans were it's honestly even sadder when you think about it how people it, could you imagine you're working on a game and you know the game is going to flop and you just can't really do anything about it because the upper management refuses to listen to the people actually working on the game you know what they should be doing in all game studios they should have the producers the people with the money behind it play the game play an alpha build play a beta build of the game and then ask is this game fun would you spend x amount of hours on this game so they can actually kind of understand why games are fun and why games are not fun or have someone there a person who's completely unbiased like i, I know they have these play tests but clearly this play testing isn't enough because i'm sure people spoke out against it and like hey this is not fun this is not good and yet they still put out a trash product so i don't really actually i don't have a solution other than having the producers play these games themselves rocksteady hired people without telling them they were working on a live multiplayer game and those hired questioned why exactly the studio was departing from its single player roots many dev left as a result well obviously could you imagine if you got hired at a company for like a management position and then you get there and like yeah that management position has been filled so we're just gonna put you as a waiter or we're gonna put you as a cook until the position reopens and once that pr position reopens you can then apply for that role it's like broski 
I applied for the role and I got it. I got it accepted. And now you're backpedaling and you're telling me I'm going to be a waiter or a busboy or something like that. Obviously, I'm not going to stay in the company in their hopes that you guys are going to fulfill your promises one day. Staff wondered out loud why the game had transitioned away from mostly melee combat, asking the famous, why does Captain Boomerang shoot? You guys had a golden combat system that many, many, many games to come uh, copied and uh, um, adapted to their own franchises and added new iterations to it. You guys had a, a, a goose that laid golden eggs and instead of using that amazing free flow combat system that we saw in the Arkham series, you decided to make a looter shooter instead. Again, if you guys had kept the free flow combat system, added a couple of heroes that people actually like, and that the squad, mind you, I don't even think the, the squad movies did that well. So I don't think, I don't understand why they thought a game would fare much better. If they had kept that free flow combat system, and they had and they had evolved it to suit a multiplayer uh, a multiplayer game i am 100 percent certain that the game would have done significantly better than uh the the squad and the justice league i actually made a video about that you can check that out in uh i'll, I'll, I'll link it right now you can check it out it's called gotham knights saves the justice league shameless self plug at what point there was an elaborate vehicle system where you could upgrade cars and bikes for traversal but devs wondered why that existed because all characters had city bound and traversal mechanics already the piece said it was scraped but it did live on a little bit in form of an odd mission with flying rocket firing cars that served no real purpose and an entire support squad member at the home base gizmo was devoted to the car concept despite them having close to no part in the game and this is just a perfect example of poor resource management you have a game that's all about your characters traversing the map in a fun way why would you waste resources, time, money, and developers' times creating a vehicle system in a game where you have an amazing traversal system? That's like if Sunset Overdrive or Spider-Man 1 and 2, like, oh, here's the spider bike. Here's the spider copter. It's like, no, I want to swing around the city and be Spider-Man. That's part of the reason why I'm playing. Honestly, the one thing that made me even think about getting the squad was the traversal. I like the traversal looks like so much fun that I am willing to give this game a chance. I'm so happy I did not because I mean, it's self-explanatory and I'm, I'm not going to waste you guys' time with that. Rocksteady leadership scraped large chunks of the script, which seems obvious in the final product. And a studio co-founder, Sefton Hill, admitted he hadn't played much Destiny their clear leader in the live service space. That had spent close to a decade learning how to avoid the pitfalls of the genre. That's genius. Let's make a live service game without playing any live service games prior, without any information regarding live service, because I'm sure that I'm just that good. Hill, along with other co-founder Jamie Walker, left the studio before the squad was finished, and they've just announced they're making, you guessed it, a single player game, this time for X. And yeah, I think it's great. I think it's unfortunate that uh, that they were either pressured or they were fooled into making a live service game or maybe it was their decision and they were in complete agreement with Warner Brothers. I don't know. I wasn't in the room. But what I can say is that their roots are in single player game. Their success is in single player game. And I think it's a very intelligent thing for them to do. Like, hey, listen, we have we, we no longer have control of Rocksteady. So we're going to dip from it. We're going to create our own studio and we're going to make a single player game for Xbox because you guys at one Warner Brothers are and it seems like even Sony is getting more and more into the live service approach and it seems like Xbox is going more and more towards the single player approach you look back like 10 years ago and it was the complete opposite Sony had all the great single player exclusive and Xbox had all these multiplayer slash live service games and I guess I guess times have changed times uh, Xbox um, I might I might get an Xbox well, I don't need to get an Xbox since I have a computer but you guys understand that it is better to put your large investments into something you know you can do instead of gambling it all away on something you believe might work because it's worked for other people. Something it seems like executives and board members and CEOs just have a very hard time 
understanding. Fortnite isn't a multi-million dollar game, if not multi-billion dollar game, because it's live service. It's a multi-billion dollar in a game because it's good, because it's a good game. Yeah, they don't have, it doesn't have amazing graphics. You don't see the people's irises dilate and stuff like that. It's simply a good game. I don't even like battle royales. I don't like that. And I don't even like Fortnite. I don't play it. However, I can objectively look at the game and go, yeah, that's a good game. People feel like they're getting their money's worth when they're putting in that money to play it. Please, Warner Brothers, take a page from Fortnite and make a good live service game or don't pressure single player studios to make live service games. In February, the piece reminds us Warner Brothers said that it wanted more collaborations between the studios. So Rocksteady's layoffs wouldn't make sense as they were already understaffed compared to their competitors. That may be true, but the squad came out in February and the full scope of the failure of its live service ambitions was not clear yet. Still, anything that avoids any further industry layoff is a good thing. Hopefully, they can pivot back to the kind of project that actually makes sense for them and their bad decision-making leadership who oversaw the squad's worst aspect is now gone. Even though there are no current signs of layoffs, it would not surprise me if there are some layoffs because they're not being very forthcoming with the actual losses. I did see a source that said it was around $200 million, which is this $100 million shy of how much Spider-Man costs to make. So I don't even want to imagine how much money they invested in making the game before calculating that $200 million loss. However, I really do hope that uh, they stick to their word and that layoffs are not going to be happening at Rocksteady because there's a bunch of great developers at this studio and the video game world, I'd say for the past month, has been in a bit of a crisis with many layoffs and a bunch of projects that are just flopping entirely and costing these studios probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And unfortunately, that caused more layoffs, which we have less people working on games and less people working on games means less games. And if we get more games, they're probably not as good. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What do you think um, the new studio is going to be working on? And what do you think Rocksteady's next project is going to be? Do you think that they're going to be sticking to live service or are they going to go back to their roots at single player? Let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, be sure to hit that like button, favorite, share, and subscribe because we're trying to hit 300 subs before the end of the month. And if you don't want to help or remember, at the end of the day, I'm just some guy on the internet and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. If you want to see more of my face, be sure you hit the video you see on screen right now.